Here's another example of how we deal with surface tension. In this case, it's a very interesting example because here we have a dish that's filled with mercury. Of course, nowadays the uh, government doesn't like you to do that because mercury vapors are harmful to you. Uh, but let's say we did this anyway and we had a cup with uh, mercury in it and we put a very small capillary tube inside that cup of mercury. What we would see inside the tube is that the mercury would actually be depressed and the reason for that is because there's actually a repulsive force between the glass and the mercury which causes the mercury inside the capillary tube to be pushed down. And so what we're trying to do is find how far down that would be done, uh, would, that the mercury would be pushed. And let's say that the radius of the capillary tube is 0 0.5 millimeters. And of course, knowing that the density of mercury is 13.6 uh, grams per cubic centimeter, and that is the surface tension coefficient for mercury uh, in dynes per centimeters and newtons per meter, let's find out how far down it gets depressed. So first of all, we can say that the force due to surface tension is equal to the coefficient of surface tension times the length along which this uh, surface tension acts times the cosine of the contact angle between mercury and glass. And it turns out in this case, it's not zero, it's 127 de degrees, and that's counted from the, uh, where the mercury meets the glass, that angle right there, all the way down to the bottom angle right here with the glass, so it's 127 degrees. Also, we know that that will be equal to the weight of the mercury that's being pressed down. So that should be equal to the mg of the mercury. And of course, since mercury is a fluid at room temperature, we can say that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, which then implies that the mass is equal to density times volume. And that then gets substituted in for here. So we can set those two equal to each other. So we have the coefficient times L times the cosine of theta is equal to rho vg. And now, from that, we're supposed to find H. Well, I don't see an H yet, but the H is kind of buried inside that volume because the volume of this evacuated space or region inside the capillary tube, of course, is going to be the surface area or the cross-sectional area times the height. So we can write this as gamma L cosine of theta is equal to rho times the cross-sectional area times the height times G. And now we have the H that we're looking for. So we're going to then go ahead and divide both sides by rho ag and turn the equation around. So we have height is equal to the coefficient times L times the cosine of theta divided by the density, the cross-sectional area, and g. Now the last thing we have to do now is plug in what L is equal to. And of course, L will be the circumference on the inside of the uh, tube. And then A would be the cross-sectional area. So this would become um, gamma times 2 pi r. Uh, that is, of course, the circumference of the inside diameter of the tube times the cosine of theta divided by density. The cross-sectional area, of course, would be pi r squared, pi r squared, and then we have g. Now we can simplify things just a little bit. We have a pi here and a pi there. We have one r, and that r cancels out. And so we can say that h is equal to gamma times 2 times the cosine of theta divided by the density. One of the r survives in the denominator, ng, and now all we have to do is plug in what those numbers are. We probably want to do it in CGS units, centimeters and gram uh, seconds. So this is equal to gamma would therefore be 465 times 2 times the cosine of 127 degrees. That will give us the negative. The negative will then, of course, uh, indicate that it's downward. So we have had a depression instead of a rise inside the tube divided by the density. This is 13.6 grams per cubic centimeter. We multiply times the radius, which was a half a millimeter. We have to convert that to centimeters, of course. We're in CGS units, so 0.05 centimeters. And then G would be 980 centimeters per second squared. Got to close that up. Let's find out how far down the mercury gets pushed. So we have 465 times 2 times the cosine whoop, of 127 degrees. That's a minus 0.6 divided by 13.6 divided by 0 0.05 and divided by 980. And what do we get? A minus 0 0.8 eight four now units of course since we're in cgs units that would be centimeters so almost a complete centimeter 
below the level. So it gets depressed quite a bit. Now, of course, if this was water, water would have a smaller coefficient, but of course, much less density. And so uh, water would actually be depressed quite a bit more. If it was depressed in this case, water, of course, would be rising up. Mercury is being pushed down by almost the distance of a centimeter. That's how you do that.